there's something about embarrassment that's I've competed a lot in my life and I think the if I'm to introspect it, the thing I'm most afraid of is being like humiliated, I think. Oh, yeah, nobody cares about that. Look, you're the only and, person on the planet exactly. that cares about you being humiliated. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like a really useless thought. It is. It's, it's like, it's, <laughs> it's like uh, you're all humiliated. Something happened in a room full of people, and they walk out, and they didn't think about it one more second. Or maybe somebody told a but, funny story to somebody else. And then it dissipates it throughout, yeah. That's, yeah. No, I know it, too. I mean, <laughs> I've been really embarrassed about shit that nobody cared about myself. Yeah. It's a funny thing. So the worst thing ultimately is just, uh, yeah, yeah the, but that, that's a cage and then you have to get out of it. Yeah. Like once you, here's the thing, once you find something like that, you have to be determined to break it. Cause otherwise you'll just, you know, so you accumulate that kind of junk and then you die as a, you know, a mess. So the, the goal, I guess it's, always, it's like a cage within a cage. I guess the goal is to die in the biggest possible cage. <laughs> well, ideally you'd have no cage. Wow. You know, people do get enlightened. I've met a few. It's great. You found a few? There's a few out there? I don't know. Of course there are. Um, Either that or they have, you know, it's a great sales pitch. There's like enlightened people write books and do all kinds of stuff. It's a good way to sell a book. I'll, I'll give you that. You've never met somebody you just thought, they just kill me. Like they just, like, like mental clarity, humor. No, 100%, but I just feel like they're living in a bigger cage. They have their you, own. You they're, still think there's a cage. There's still a cage. <laughs> you secretly suspect there's always a cage. Uh, there's no. There's nothing outside the, the universe. There's nothing outside the cage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, work, <laughs> you, work, you worked at a bunch of companies. Uh, you led a, a lot of amazing teams. Um, I don't. Have, have you, I'm not sure if you've ever been like at the early stages of a startup, but do you have advice for uh, somebody that wants to uh, do a startup or build a company, like build a strong team of engineers that are passionate and just want to uh, solve a big problem? Like, is there uh, more specifically on that point? Well, you have to be really good at stuff. If you're going to lead and build a team, you, you better be really interested in how people work and think. The well, people or the solution to the problem. So there's two things, right? One is how people work, and the other is the founder. Well, actually, there's, there's quite a few successful startups. So it's pretty clear the founders don't know anything about people. Like the idea was so powerful that it pre propelled them. But I suspect somewhere early, they, they hired some people who understood people. Because people really need a lot of care and feeding to collaborate and work together and feel engaged and work hard. You know, like startups are all about outproducing other people. Like you're nimble because you don't have any legacy. You don't have, you know, a bunch of people who are depressed about life, and, you know, just showing up. You know, so startups have a lot of advantages that way. You know? Do you like the, the Steve Jobs talked about this idea of A players and B players? I don't know if you uh, know this formulation. Uh, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> that, that, Organizations that get taken over by B player leaders often really underperform their higher C players. That said, in big organizations, there's so much work to do. Like, and there's so many people who are happy to do what you know, like the leadership or the big idea people would con consider menial jobs. Mm -hmm. And you know, you need a place for them, but you need an organization that both values and rewards them, but doesn't let them take over the leadership of it. Got it. But so, so you need to have an organization that's resistant to that. But in the early days, the the notion with with Steve was that like one B player in a room of A players will be like destructive to the whole. I've seen that happen. I I don't know if it's like always true. Like you know, you you run into people who are clearly B players, but they think they're A players, and so they right. have a loud voice at the table, and they make lots of demands for that. But there's other people who are like, I know who I am. I just want to work with, you know, cool people on cool shit and just tell me what to do and I'll go get it done. Yeah. You know, so you have to, again, this is like people skills. Like, what kind of person is it? You know, I've met some really great people I love working with that weren't the biggest ID people or the most productive ever, but they show up, they get it done. You know, they, they create connection and community that people value. It's, 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 it's pretty diverse. So I don't think there's a recipe for that.